So we've done some setup and some review, and now it's time to get to the meat of the subject. We're going to verify our requirements and conduct our hypothesis test. Again, we're still working with this data set, with this Reiki therapy data set. Okay, so let's start with verifying requirements. And again, we've seen this before, but it has a new component. So we need random, and, excuse me, random dependent and then independent, which seems a little strange, but what's happening is you need your samples to be dependent upon each other. Say they were you know, pre and post, which is what we have in this case. And then you also need that group of people to be independent of the population. And then you need that this, the sample size is bigger than 30 or a graph, which is what we have here. All right, so random is easy because random was given. It said it was a random group of patients. So that's simple. It's written right in the problem. It said a random group of random sample right here, random sample of 13 patients. So we're good there. All right, now we need a dependent sample. Well, we definitely have that because it's before and after. We already said it, but we'll put it right here. So yes, it was one group measured twice. Before and after. And then we need the sample to be independent of the population. And we've done that a million times. That is that your little n is less than 0.05 capital N. Now little n is 13. Capital N is a little weird in this case because it wasn't really given. It's just implied that it's all chronic pain sufferers, right? Because this was a random group of, you know, 13 chronic pain sufferers. So this would be less than 0.05 of all chronic pain sufferers. I'll just say chronic pain patients. And that's a yes, of course, right? There's just tons of people in chronic pain, so this would be easy. Normal is kind of weird because it says that for normal, we need n to be bigger than 30, which we do not have, or we could have a graph that shows normal, which we do, because the points are all linear-ish. Right? They're within those boundaries. This is actually a different program that I made this one with, which I really like because it shows the boundary lines. If any dot is past those boundary lines, no good. Right? But we don't have any dots past those boundary lines, so we're okay. So this will be yes. So we have four yeses right? because um, the points are linear-ish with no outliers. And we're set. All right, now let's run the test. Our lovely six step process. So we start with step one, H0, which we actually already did because we had a discussion on the previous page of why it must be a greater than, right? So again, reduces in this case means before is less than after. Right, that's just a note. You don't have to write that in. The, and normally you don't write that in a problem. You would write it in your notes because you want to remind yourself why it worked that way. Alpha is our probability of a type 1 error, also known as the level of significance. It's right here. Everybody loves step 2. Step 2 is wonderful. Step 3 was T0. Now, there is a formula for it, but we're not going to do it. We're just going to use technology in Chapter 11. Technically, this one's easier to do than 11.1 and 11.3, but nevertheless, just to keep things consistent. So we're going to grab technology. We'll make technology do that, and we'll make technology do step four for us as well. So let me start by drawing my hypotheses. Um, okay, so let me grab technology. If you remember, I ran a test earlier, but it was not a good test. <laughs> I, when I ran the test earlier, I went to stat, t stat, paired, right? I said before, I said after. 
I saved the differences. That was my whole reason for doing it. And then I ignored everything else and just said compute. But now I don't want to ignore everything else. So I'm not going to do the differences. I mean, I can. It, matter of fact, I will. I'll show you what happens because it's just going to put them into variable four. It just, it, it'll just repeatedly do differences for you. So I'll save the differences again for fun. And then I'm going to change this to a less than, right? So it's mu d equals zero, mu d less than zero. And I don't want to forget down here to do my p-value plot because my p-value plot will give me my step four. And then I say compute, and this is accurate. Oh, no, it's not. Look, I messed up. I went the wrong way. That's OK. I, I purposely want you to see that. So if you go the wrong way, if you mess up your sign and you go less than instead of greater than or whatever, what will happen is you'll have a huge p-value. Let me show you the graph. The graph will be all red. <laughs> if your graph is all red like that, that's a giant red flag. You went the wrong way. You've got to switch your sign to the other direction, right? It's got to go that way instead of the other way. So it's not a big deal. If you mess it up, you'll know because your stack crunch will be huge. It'll be red. Your p-value will be ginormous, really close to one. No good. So let's go back to options, edit, and switch to the correct way. Reduce is meant a greater than, and then say compute. That p-value looks much more like what we were expecting, and that picture looks much better, doesn't it? Exactly. So if you mess up, don't don't panic. Just go back and change your direction for your for your h1, and you'll notice it did the differences again. If you have that that button selected, every time you run it, it'll find you the differences. <laughs> so you might want to turn it off after you've gotten them one time because you don't need them the rest of the time. Okay, and honestly, everything we need is on this page, but you might have to make it wider so you can read the values up at the top. All right, so it tells us that our T stat is 4.3193. That's step three, All right? That's our T statistic. So it's 4.3193. Let me write that down. 4.3193. And then we can see, and that's why I drew this. I knew where this was going. So I'm going to put T0, 4.3193 right here. I'm going to shade that little bitty tail, and that p-value was 0.0005. So we'll make little notes to ourselves that we got this and this from StatCrunch. It was stat, t-stat, paired. There we go. All right, now we have to make a decision. Well, that p-value has three zeros in it. That is definitely lower than that alpha. So step five, we are going to reject H, O, our null hypothesis, because the p-value, which is 0 0.0005, is less than our alpha, which was only 0 0.05. Right? When your p-value is low, lower than your alpha, you reject your null hypothesis. All right, step six. Since we rejected HO, then we would say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that, all right, now what was the claim? So, and I, again, in chapter 10 and 11, the claim is usually written somewhere. So you can kind of see, there was a mean reduction in pain level after the Reiki therapy. There, that's the claim, right there. That's all you have to say. So claim that there was a mean reduction in pain level after, oops, if I could spell the word after, goodness gracious, after the Reiki, again, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, <laughs> therapy. You might want for your notes to kind of write here, that's the H1 claim, right? You can tell because it has the word reduction in it, right? That'll be what, whenever those words are, you know, the greater or less than words, those, that is where your claim is almost always.